Okay, so this video is meant to walk you through different types of forces and how we would kind of symbolize them. So the first force that we're going to interact with, like in almost every single problem, is the force called weight. It's also known as a gravitational force. So this is a gravitational force due to the gravitational attraction to a very large body. towards a large object. Um, in our case, it's the Earth. Um, but if you go to the moon, there's a gravitational force of attraction to the moon. In fact, we are actually feeling a very slight gravitational force of attraction to the sun, but the gravitational force to the Earth is so kind of overpowering that we don't even notice the gravitational force of attraction due to other objects. Um, we, in this class, symbolize the gravitational force of weight as a W. Um, some textbooks um, and other kind of sites or sources, they may symbolize it as F sub G. Um, I'm trying to be consistent with your Giancoli textbook, so we're gonna stick with the W, um, but note that sometimes like I may give you a lecture from like my college prep physics course or expose you to some other um, book or whatever, and they may symbolize it as F sub G, okay? Um, in terms of the equation, here's our first equation for a force. Weight is equal to mg, or mass times gravity, where g is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, that is the same acceleration of gravity that we saw in um, motion in the vertical direction, but when we described it as ay, we would say ay is equal to negative 9.8. We're gonna only leave it as just a g is equal to 9.8 because we're gonna take into account that downward direction when we draw our force diagram. So whenever we draw our force diagram for the weight, the weight will always pull downward. And because it's pulling downward, we've taken into account the fact that that gravity value is negative. So when we mathematically plug it in, we are gonna just leave it as a positive 9.8, okay? And next force is friction. So friction is a force that opposes motion. Um, there's different types of forces in terms of like a contact force versus a fluid friction force. We'll go into that a little bit more detail later when we look at a closer look at friction. For right now, I just want you to know that it's, you know, it's the force that opposes motion. We symbolize it as a lowercase, I'm gonna just a marker all over myself. Um, we symbolize it as a lowercase f. Again, that's what your textbook does, but there are other textbooks um, and other resources that might symbolize it as f sub f. I'm gonna go ahead and stick with this lowercase f because that's what your textbook does. Uh, next force is tension. This is a force that a rope exerts. on an object being pulled. Um, we symbolize it with a capital T. Again, other textbooks may say F sub T, but we're gonna stick with T. There's no equation for tension. It's just something that you will either be told or something you would solve for in a problem, okay? And again, this is when it's being pulled on something. Okay, next one is the normal force. And we're gonna, I, well, we, I will go through this in a little bit more detail once I get into Newton's laws. But right now, what you need to know is that the normal force is the support force that a surface exerts on an object. what's holding it up. So right now I'm standing here on the floor and there is a normal force supporting me. Like if there wasn't a force from the floor, I'd fall to the floor. Um, and I will go through an example of when that happened to me. Um, but the normal force is a support force. So right now the only thing supporting me is the floor. So I just have the one normal force on the floor. Let's say I get a little casual and I lean, okay? Now I've got two normal forces. I've got the floor supporting me and then this like wall is supporting me, okay? 
Um, something to note about the normal force is the normal force is always exerted in a direction perpendicular to the surface. So perpendicular and away from the surface. So for example, like if I have a box just hanging out on the floor, I should just go like this, doesn't matter. Um, and I were to think about, okay, if I were to draw the force diagram or the free body diagram for this, I know that the, the block has a weight because it's on earth. So there's a weight force um, pulling it downwards, but the floor is supporting it. So I would say that there's also a normal force. Well, I didn't give you the symbol. Ah, preview. The symbol for normal force is a capital N. I know it's the same symbol as Newton. You're just going to have to get over it. Um, some textbooks, they symbolize it as F sub N, but your textbook symbolizes it as a just an N, so I'm going to leave it at that. Um, but I'm going to come back to my force diagram here. I've got my box. It has a weight force acting on it, and that weight acts from the center of mass of that object. So I, that's why I've drawn my weight from the center. And then the floor is holding it up. And so the floor, I've drawn it from the floor. The floor is pushing up onto my box. And it's just kind of sitting there, hanging out. It's at rest. So my forces are actually balanced. And so my two arrows are similar in size, okay? There's no equation for normal force. It just is. It's something that we will learn to either calculate um, and figure out what the value is. And that's because the normal force is not necessarily a consistent value. It is what you need it to be unless it fails. And I know that seems a little vague, but when I talk about Newton's third law, I'll get into a little bit more detail in terms of how that normal force knows how much force to exert. Okay, so that's it for the major forces. Um, any other force, we would just do like a subscript. So if it's like a push, we would say FP. Um, if it's like an engine, we would say Fe, and there's some other forces that we will learn along the way, and as we learn those forces, I'll give you kind of the definition and the symbols for that. But for now, this is a good primer for different types of forces.